really hard sometimes to answer questions that people have in a very short you know, minute or two. It's very hard to do, but I'm going to try. So this person has a very interesting comment, and I don't take offense at it. In fact, I actually understand where the person's coming from. This person says, wow, you claim to be chosen. And the person says, I ask that you are. Um, and this person says, I person says, I can only hope to be chosen too. No, sorry, just time out, okay? Unfortunately, there's, there's so much bad theology out there, and you can say, well, is this opinion or is this theology? No, this is doctrine I'm about, I'm about to say. So there is nothing, when I make a statement like that, um, I'm going to be damned if I'm going to have somebody say, well, how do you know? In Thessalonians, Paul writes something about how these people received the gospel. He says, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in as much as you know what manner of men you were among you for your sake. That um, implication, number one and two, as you became follower, followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. So two things are said here, the way it came to them and the way it changed them. Now, if you take what Paul says out of Ephesians, he says, to the Ephesian people, you were called out from among, the Greek word is ex alexito, out from among those who weren't chosen. So if somebody says, well, how do you know? It's for me, I put it down this way. There are criteria. I can first say that I wasn't a Christian my whole entire life. So somebody like me who has had a real about face, someone who could have cared less about the church or even God's word, didn't, I knew there was a God but didn't know who he was. Now I stand in front of you every single week teaching the word of God. I think that is not proof in and of itself, but word, the way somebody receives it and the way it changes them. Now we're told as a promise that God calls and chooses whom he wills. So it's pretty simple. If you're not interested in sitting and listening week after week and every day getting into the word, studying, praying, learning about God, you're probably not called and probably not chosen. That's a real easy way to put it. But for somebody like me, and I'm, I'm not going to apologize for my stance, it's abundantly clear to me now that being chosen is not once saved, always saved. See, so you, you can't just say, well, I don't, I don't know how you could be chosen, and then make that the eternal salvation doctrine. That's not what I'm saying. There is no way for a person to be able to receive the word if God hasn't placed the spirit in them. You get tired, you don't want to listen. I've seen this before. Enough years of ministry, both in the pulpit and by the side of the late Dr. Gene Scott to tell you that when somebody comes and they can be really excited for a time, but when that wanes, that usually was flesh excitement, not spirit. The spirit gives you the endurance to go through the most horrible things in ministry. When everybody turns their back and you still stay by the stuff, I'm not going to apologize for my understanding of scripture and for people who understand the way I understand, you should not apologize for saying God called me and God chose me. And that is not the, now I will never fall out of God's grace. It simply means that God put his hand on you and you have a desire now to know about him, to learn about him. He's placed his spirit in you. The Bible also says if you have not the spirit of Christ, you're none of his. So I put all these things together. I hope that helps the person who probably does not understand how people are come into the kingdom, how they are called, how they are chosen, and still my responsibility individually, just because I'm a pastor, doesn't save me. It is my responsibility to stay connected in faith to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I keep that faith connection, I keep doing what I'm doing, and the rest, everything else, God works out the details. But for those people who might be slightly confused, I hope I straightened you out. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I realize that there are people that get scared of making statements, but let me ask you this question. You make a statement, you make a statement as a Christian by faith. 
There is no, here's your absolute unequivocal guarantee of anything. We operate by faith. So even if I made the, state, the statement by faith, it is part of what the Christian is supposed to do, much like healing. You claim that you are, even if you are not yet. That is the way we walk by faith, not by sight. So I hope that that can be applied to many. Come into this house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord.